in our city, not only because they have a local effect in terms of heat islands and local effects around public health, but also because it's our responsibility to do everything we can to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions for the sake of our country and our planet. That's not something that eight years ago I thought um, was the direction that we would be going in. I thought it was simply about what neighbors would have to read and what the rest of the community would have to read. So I will say in gratitude to the developers that I've had an opportunity to learn about many things um, that otherwise have been taking a lot longer for my attention to go in that direction. But I think all of the council knows that climate change is a major concern uh, for us. There are local actions which we take, holding aside a silent hearing, and hopefully determining the point is not suitable for the Springfield is the direction we should go. So thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Busey. Uh, our next speaker is Jesse Letterman. Regarding the same subjects. Good evening, Council. Jesse Letterman, 147 Westminster Street. Uh, I would echo Michael Ann's comments on uh, regarding Councilor Ramos's resolution on the biomass incinerator and the Public Health Council, and I'd add that. It's been a real pleasure working with a number of you around this issue in the City Council um, since our switch to ward representation has never failed to do its job in regards to protecting the residents of the City of Springfield from this incinerator. And I certainly hope that you'll join us in urging the Public Health Council to do their job in the same regard. I'm actually here tonight to talk to you regarding Councillor Edwards' resolution supporting two statewide bills um, regarding gas leaks across the city of Springfield. Both these bills are in the House right now, sponsored by Representative Lori Ehrlich. One is to uh, stop the practice of gas utilities passing the cost of lost gas on to ratepayers in the city of Springfield and across the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And we were able to sponsor a forum last week regarding this issue that I know uh, Councillor Allen was able to attend, and we briefed a number of councillors on this issue as well. Um, you may be aware that currently uh, last year, it was an estimated $2.3 million in wasted gas that was passed on to ratepayers across the city of Springfield and estimated to be up to $122 million across the Commonwealth of Massachusetts of wasted resources that are being passed on to the residents of the Commonwealth. The second bill is sort of a common sense bill, and I think we talked a little bit about it this morning at the Infrastructure Roundtable in regards to when road repairs are already being done to bring in the utilities, in this case specifically gas utilities, to conduct uh, repairs on leaks that exist no matter what grade they are. Uh, to make sure that those leaks do not increase in size and their ability to harm public health and public safety. Um, it seems to be that, at least on the surface, this is the practice. We'd like to see it set in stone and ensure that it's really happening not just in the city of Springfield, but across the Commonwealth. To date, I believe over 30 municipalities have passed resolutions in favor of this ordinance. We've spoken with Springfield's delegation about it, and a number of them are open to it as well. So we're very hopeful that the council will join uh, these dozens of communities across the Commonwealth and put Springfield on the map as supporting uh, these resolutions to protect our ratepayers across the city. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Letterman. Uh, our next speaker is Victor Davila. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. President. Good evening, councils. Good evening, uh, everybody. My name is Victor Davila, and I live in Forest Park here in the city of Springfield. Uh, I'm here also to speak on the gas leak resolution. And uh, councilors, as you know, it is no, it's an open secret that we have a decaying infrastructure here in Springfield. We have paid attention to the school, to the school buildings. We have paid attention to City Hall. We have paid attention, and we are always struggling to fix the roads. But one thing that we need to start paying attention is the gas pipes throughout the city. These gas leaks have three direct impacts on us, financial, environmental, and safety issues. Financially speaking, the gas that leaks out of these pipes, the cost is passed down to me and to you. So I ask you, why should I be paying for something that I do not consume? I just paid a $500 bill last month on my gas pipes, on my gas uh, bill, so it's a little sensitive for me. So why am I paying for something that I do not use? Environmentally, the gas leaks out to the air. 
and could be inhaled by people, negatively affecting their, their health. And thirdly, safety. We all know that gas leaks go boom pretty quickly. I remind you that about two or three years ago, we had a gas explosion on Worthington Street. And that was a fiasco. Luckily, nobody died thanks to the quick response of the Springfield Fire and Police Department. So I ask you to pass this resolution. And I also ask you to immediately start working on the gas leak ordinance. I ask you to work on it and put some real teeth into it. Let us not wait until a tragedy happens to address this issue. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Davila. Okay, that will conclude our public speak out portion of the meeting. Uh, we will convene in regular session uh, in six minutes. Good evening, everybody. <clears throat> if the council and our guests could please take your seats. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Councillor Hurst. Present. Councillor Shea. Present. Councillor Twiggs. Absent. Councillor Allen. Present. Councillor Rook. Present. Councillor William, Bud Williams. Here. Councillor Ramos. Present. Councillor Marcus Williams. Present. Councillor Gomez. Present. Councilor Ash. Councilor Edwards. Present. Councilor Walsh. Absent. Councilor Fenton. Here. Will the clerk please recognize the councilor in seat number three? Councilor Twiggs. Present. Will the councilors and our guests please rise for a moment of silence? <clears throat> Please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, in liberty, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. We've got a couple things to take out of order tonight. I just want to tell everybody at the outset, we have a budget meeting scheduled for 8 o'clock. We are going to be prompt for that meeting. There's a lot of people coming here um, expecting to be heard at that time. So I'm going to go unusually quick through a lot of these items tonight. Just appreciate everybody's cooperation. If for some reason we cannot make it through, then I'm going to ask that we table the outstanding items when we get to 8 o'clock until our next meeting two weeks from now. Okay? Council Ramos. Thank you, Mr. President. I'll be brief. Um, I'm, I'm actually, you got to call the item, right? Biomass. I'd like to take the biomass incinerator um, resolution out of order. Yes. Okay. If there's no objection, Mr. Clerk, item number 21. Item number 21 is a resolution regarding the biomass incinerator. What we have before us is a resolution sponsored um, by me and Councillor Allen, and I believe uh, Councillor Gomez wanted to be a sponsor, added as a sponsor as well. In response to uh, some information that was given to us by Arise for Social Justice, which has um, been very helpful in keeping us in the loop and what's happening with the biomass incinerator, proposed biomass incinerator. And um, it, it looks like they are, the next step uh, for the city is to, for the Public Health Council to hold a site assignment hearing. Um, that site assignment hearing uh, is time sensitive and so I thought that it was important to bring this before us and uh, urge the Public Health Council to hold a hearing. And I just want to read this into the record oh, okay. before I continue. Whereas the Springfield City Council has been on record as standing opposed to the construction of a biomass incinerator in the city of Springfield, voting in 2011 to revoke the special permit for Palmer, Palmer Re Renewable Energy proposed project and voting in subsequent years to authorize continued legal action to defend our position in court Whereas the opposition has been driven by serious concerns regarding the impact of this proposed incinerator on health, on the health, well-being, and the quality of life of all Springfield residents, especially our children and seniors, that has been conveyed to us by the vast majority of our constituents. And whereas the city of Springfield continues to receive an F rating by the American Lung Association in regards to our air quality and continues to suffer from the most from some of the highest pediatric asthma rates in the Commonwealth. 
And whereas the city of Springfield has been designated as an environmental justice community by the Commonwealth as a result of our large number of health disparities and vulnerable populations, and whereas the Springfield Health Council is charged with overseeing matters related to the health of residents of Springfield. And whereas on February 10th, 2016, the Massachusetts Association Health Board's attorney submitted the Public Health Council a letter indicating her suggestion that the Public Health Council had the authority to hold a site assignment hearing under Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 111, Section 143, and whereas many residents and community organizations have called upon the Springfield Public Health Council to hold a site assignment hearing to further understand the potential impact of a biomass incinerator on the public health of Springfield. Now therefore be it resolved that the Springfield City Council urges the Springfield Public Health Council to hold a site assignment hearing pertaining to the proposed biomass incinerator. So essentially all we're doing is asking them to hold a hearing. We're not asking them to take a position one way or the other. We're not taking a position one way or the other. We've been on record. Uh, several times in opposition of this uh, biomass um, incinerator and all we're asking for is for them to complete the process. Uh, the process is incomplete and uh, we're respectfully asking them to hold the hearing uh, in the interest of public health. Thank you very much. Okay, any other counselors? Okay. Councilor Allen. Uh, thanks Mr. President. I co-sponsored this with Orlando with Councilor Ramos. Uh, for exactly the reason he said at the end, it's not to say what the outcome of the hearing should be. That's up to the Public Health Council. That's why we have boards and commissions and councils and civic associations and the rest. Little local boards that are in an area or citywide that we entrust to make decisions uh, and bring, bring those decisions, if it's appropriate, bring them forth to us. This is just saying please hold the hearing uh, because that's, the, uh, that's within their realm of authority and something that uh, I'm encouraging them to do, uh, to just hold a hearing or whatever, however it comes out, it comes out. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> All those in favor of the resolution say aye. Aye. Those opposed, ayes have it. Resolution passes, congratulations. Okay, Councilor Edwards. Okay, so we'll do 18 first, and then 19, Mr. Clerk. Item number 18 is a resolution regarding House Bill gas leaks. Uh, first, I want to thank my colleagues on the Maintenance and Development Committee. As you see, it's been very well publicized that they have been talking um, very uh, consistently about the uh, infrastructure uh, and the delivery of these uh, of. Uh, water, gas, electric power in the city of Springfield. This resolution falls right in line with that. Um, as we've seen nationally, the effects of gas leaks around the country, they are devastating. Uh, the, I am fortunate to be the chair of the uh, Green Committee, a group of uh, concerned citizens and uh, from representing a number of different environmental groups and agencies who are taking their time to come spend some time making me more knowledgeable on a monthly basis. Uh, they have come up with a, uh, a resolution that I'm hopeful that all my colleagues will support. I'm going to read it at this point, and it says, um, whereas data from the Massachusetts Department of Public Utilities shows that there are over 500 reported ongoing natural gas leaks throughout the city of Springfield, mm -hmm. and whereas some of these leaks date back as early as 1900, I'm sorry, 1990, and Whereas the cost of lost gas has been estimated using information from studies conducted by Harvard and Boston University experts at as much as $2.3 million annually being passed on to the Springfield taxpayers. And whereas a 2013 research report released by the office of Senator Edward Markley documents that between 2000 and 2011, by not replacing leaking gas pipelines, Gas companies have passed on to Massachusetts ratepayers between $640 million and $1.5 billion in costs for unaccounted gas that never reached their homes, businesses, and municipalities. 
and that that leaked gas has contributed irreparably to the degradation of the public health, climate change, and between 2014 and 2012 has caused over 250 explosions. Whereas, according to the University According to the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, in 2011, leaks and other processes of natural gas distribution systems were the largest source of methane emissions in the U.S., accounting for 19 percent of the total methane emissions, methane being a gas that possesses global warming potential far greater than other greenhouse gases. Specifically, it has been measured to be over 80 times more powerful as a greenhouse gas and carbon dioxide over a 20-year period. And whereas the, this body has gone on record multiple times in the past as being supportive of sound environmental stewardship and environmental justice in protecting the health and the economic well-being of the public. Now, therefore, it be resolved that the Springfield City Council goes on record as supporting Massachusetts House Bill 2870 an act relative to the protecting of consumers of gas and electricity for paying for leaked and unaccounted gas. And now, therefore, it be further resolved that the Springfield City Council goes also on record as supporting Massachusetts House Bill 2871 as an act relative to gas repairs doing road projects. Now, some of the conversations you've heard and even comments that prior to the start of our meeting tonight was about the fact that the common sense of when we're tearing up the roads that the gas company would be encouraged and, and in this case forced to come out and fix the leaks that they know about regardless of the grade of the leak. Um, I think this is just good common sense uh, fiscally, financially for the taxpayers of the, of the Commonwealth and it's also the right thing to do environmentally and for our personal health and well-being. So I encourage all of you to support this unanimously. Thank you very much. Councillor Williams. Mm, thank, you. Hey, Hi, uh, thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councillor Edwards, for supporting this yes. measure. Uh, after the great meeting we had today with uh, Eversource, Columbia Gas, uh, Water and Sewer, Clean Water People, DLT, it was a great, fantastic meeting, Mr. President, with a lot of information. And this was on the front burner. And I just want to commend arise for bringing us to the front burner of the meeting last week. I couldn't make it. But this is, this is a, it's a very serious matter. And it's costing the taxpayers a lot of money in terms of out of their pockets, the users, and not only that, it's costing uh, the health issue that goes along with it. But uh, this, is, this bill goes a little way in trying to correct problems. Uh, that meeting was so good today, uh, Mr. President, a lot of information, mm -hmm. and uh, even Columbia Gas has, they've forged a relationship in terms of, of talking with Arise in a very uh, proactive, proactive way, trying to work these problems out, and that's the way we have to do it. This is, uh, I want to thank you, Councilor Edwards, thank you, Councilor Ramos, for sponsoring the first two things, and I plan to support this wholeheartedly. But uh, we need, as Michael Ann said today, we need to do more of what we did today. Because when you really get the information, it puts you on Main Street. And what was said by uh, Clean Water the Commission that uh, in the Valley, in Western Mass, and especially in Springfield, we are working together. Uh, Chris Signoli with uh, uh, DPW and Kevin Kennedy and the, all the utility companies are, and all the uh, consumers and all the advocates trying to figure this thing out. But this is, this, this is real serious when you, when you dove, when you get into the, the details, you kind of like understand this is very, very, very important. And you know, it's one of those things beneath the surface. You can't see it. You can smell it sometimes, but this goes a very, very long way in terms of leveling the playing field. I plan to support this wholeheartedly. Okay, thank you very much. <clears throat> All those in favor of passage of the resolution say aye. 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 Those opposed, the ayes have it. Okay, Mr. Clerk, item number 19. Item number 19 is a resolution regarding the bottle redemption census system. Council well, Edwards. Once again, this is a resolution that is the product of the work of the Green Commission, the Green Committee uh, of the City Council. And uh, there's been some conversation in the media in past months and recently that the state legislature is considering revamping the bottle bill. And um, 
Yeah, obviously it was very controversial when it started, but the effects of it ha cannot be questioned. It has had a positive effect on addressing litter and in the environment. And this resolution is being put forth by myself uh, and in conjunction with the Green Commission or Green Committee, and it reads as, whereas it has been reported that the legislature is considering changes to the bottle bill system, and whereas the bottle bill redemption system has been successful in eliminating most of the covered beverage containers from litter that pollutes our streets and roads, and whereas most litter that remains on our streets and roadways consists of food and beverage containers that are, are, that are not included in the bottle redemption system. And whereas said litter is an eyesore that degrades property values, quality of life, and is often a source of vermin and disease. Now, therefore, it be resolved that Springfield City Council opposes any reduction in the scope of the Bottle Bell Redemption Center and that the legislature's consideration of any replacement system that generates funds, that those funds be dedicated to cleaning litter from the streets and roads of the Commonwealth. I'm open to having the legislature do their due diligence as to what my changes might be, but I want to specifically um, em emphasize the part about the fact that if they are going to make any changes that would generate any income, that that money should go back into the environment and to addressing litter and uh, waste in our public co uh, roadways across the Commonwealth. And I hope that they, my colleagues would agree and support this also. Thank you very much. Okay. All those in favor of passage of the resolution say aye. Aye. Those opposed? The ayes have it. Matter passes. <clears throat> okay, Mr. Clerk, can we take uh, items one, two, and three, please? Item one is a uh, report of a petition to uh, pave various road, uh, private ways in the city of Springfield. Item number two is a uh, report of a petition to install underground gas mains in the Old Hill neighborhood. And item number three is a uh, report of a petition to install underground, underground gas mains in um, the Old Hill neighborhood in the city of Springfield. Okay, all those in favor of accepting the uh, petition say aye. Aye. Those opposed? The ayes have it. Okay. Are there any reports of committee this evening? Councillor Walsh. Uh, Council Williams, Council Gomez and myself, Council Allen was in attendance. We had a wonderful turnout of people involved in the, uh, the utilities on the state and local level. And uh, it was very, very productive and many good things came out of it. It was a response to the water main bay, uh, break and making sure that the Springfield City Council is a partner with the utilities so that when something happens, we know about it, we're informed, and we are able to let our constituents know what is going on. It was interesting for me to note that this, the officials from the state talked about the Springfield Utilities and the DPW, how Springfield is a model for the state, a model for the state in how our utilities and government interact. So very positive things came from the uh, conference. We will have another one in September. And another thing that really surprised me, and I, I don't really remember, but you may remember who it was that said it. They said that the age of the pipes, which we were all concerned about because the water main that, that broke was installed when William Howard Taft was president, which is 1909, a long time ago, that the age of the pipe is not, is not always relevant when it, when it comes to breaks and that some of those pipes are better than, than the newer ones. So we all learned a lot today. It was very positive. And uh, I'm, I'm really pleased with how many people turned out. Thank you. All those in favor of accepting the report of committee say aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it. Any other reports of committee? Councilor Allen. Uh, thanks, Mr. President. Uh, in the last couple of weeks, we've had several finance committee meetings. Uh, the one tonight that per pertains specifically to this meeting, we went over the financial orders for tonight. Councilor Twiggs and I were there from the committee, and several members of the financial team were there. And ex with the exception of the $5,000 item that Councilor Ramos had some concerns about a couple weeks ago, um, we were in favor of all the other items tonight uh, that are on tonight's agenda. Uh, we w didn't know what to do with that uh, because that went to public safety and to us, and Councilor Ramos wasn't there. So when that one comes up, uh, we can decide uh, at that point. Um, the other committee meetings that we had in the last couple weeks all had to do with the pension liability and the budget, and I'll be speaking about that at the budget meeting. 
Uh, we had, I think, three or four meetings. The finance team was well represented at all the meetings. Uh, and over the process of the last couple of weeks, we've made great progress on understanding uh, what the liability is, and I'll speak more specifically to that in an hour. Thank you, Mr. President. Okay. All those in favor of accepting the report of committee, say aye. 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 Those opposed, the ayes have it. Any other reports of committee? Councilor mm -hmm. Hurst. She's okay. On 519, the general government uh, subcommittee met. Yeah. Uh, myself and um, uh, Councilor Allen were in attendance. It was regarding the replacement of uh, a quarter of the fleet of computers uh, for the um, school system. And so I think the issue was that there was, um, they wanted to have a four year contract to replace a quarter of the fleet that they would replace this year as well as a quarter of the fleet that they would replace next year. And then the year after, they would enter into another four-year contract. And they wanted us to vote on all four years uh, for fleets A, B, C, and D all at the same time. Uh, since then, uh, at the subcommittee meeting, they've amended their request. They want us now just to vote on uh, one of those fleets, which would they would enter into a four-year contract to lease a quarter <clears throat> excuse me, of the computers for the school department. And I'm sure Paul can explain a little bit more in depth. Councilor Allen, as well as myself, voted uh, to recommend it to the full committee, and we voted in favor of it. All those in favor of accepting <coughs> the report of committee, say aye. Aye. Those opposed, the ayes have it. Mr. Clerk, can we take item number 14 now, the relevant matter? Thank you very much, Mr. Foster, for making that change. Item number 14 is in order for an authorization to award a school department computer lease contract for a term of four years, sponsored by the mayor. Okay, are there any questions from the council on this? Satisfied that the matter's been rectified? Yeah, good job. Okay, roll call, good Mr. Clerk. Good job. Thank you, Councillor Hurst. Thanks, Very Councilor good job. Hurst. On authorizing the award, Councillor Hurst. Yes. Councillor Shea. Yes. Councillor Twiggs. Yes. Councillor Allen. Yes. Councillor Rook. Yes. Councillor Bud Williams. Yes. Councillor Ramos. Yes. Councillor Marcus Williams. Yes. Councillor Gomez. Yes. Councillor Ash. Yes. Councillor Edwards. Yes. Councillor Walsh. Yes. Councillor Finn. Yes. More insufficient. Order is approved. Thank you very much. We are joined here this evening uh, by Ludlow School Committee person uh, Chip Harrington. Thank you for joining us again, Chip. Uh, okay, Mr. Clerk. Are there any other reports of committee this evening? Okay. Item number four. Item number four is a uh, grant for health services for the homeless grant increase, no match required for $1,213,523. Good evening, Commissioner. Good evening, Councilors. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, this is our annual grant uh, to provide health services for our individuals in our community who do not have um, health insurance. They are mainly homeless. And so I ask that you accept this grant uh, from the uh, federal government. Any questions from the council? All those in favor, uh, Councilor Twiggs. Beat me on the draw. Mr. President, I just wanted to add to um, the illustrious uh, commissioner. I think when we discussed this in, at the finance committee, it is our understanding that several that would be correct. Springfield is the lead agency for Hampshire, Franklin, and Hamden counties. Yeah, and so we do see individuals from all of those three uh, counties. And what percentage goes to Springfield? I would say to you that 73% of the individuals that we see are from Springfield or Hamden County. You're quite welcome, sir. Okay. All those in, oh, Council Walsh. I just have a question, Commissioner. Uh, it's an annual grant? That would be correct. I mean, the 1.23 million is from the federal government. We bill, and so we take in revenue um, for that grant as well. Um, but absolutely, the 1.3 is from the federal government, and um, we get funds from our billing systems. Was interested to know is is it an increase or 
increase or a decrease from what you usually get, or is it based on a formula? Yeah, it is. Thank you so much for asking that. The 1.3 um, is um, a flat, in, a flat uh, number. Okay. Um, I expect that we'll get 1.7 um, okay. as we start to uh, give our data to the federal government. Okay. So thank you for asking that, Counselor. Well, thank you for answering. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody usually this nice. <laughs> okay, all those in favor of receiving the grant say aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have. Thank you. Number five. Thank, thank you, Counselor. Thank you. Item number five is an order to accept an underage alcohol enforcement grant, no match in the amount of $14,959.89. All those in favor of receiving the grant say aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it. Item number six. Item number six is an, uh, is an order to accept a grant for TJL for $10,000. Okay, all those in favor of receiving the grant say aye. 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 Those opposed, the ayes have it. Item number seven. Item number seven is an order to accept a donation for elders in the amount of $1,677. Okay, all those in favor of receiving the grant say aye. 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 Those opposed, the ayes have it. Item number eight, Mr. Clark. Item number eight is a budget transfer across departments in the amount of $20,000 sponsored by the mayor. Good evening, Mr. Plant. Oh, good evening, Mr. Lonergan. Good evening, Counselor. This is a transfer from, from the Treasury Department to the Collector Department. We're using it to pay the bill to the Republican because they went up in price. Where's Pete? Uh, they went up in price per line by $1.85 that we were not expecting. Any questions from the Council? Okay, Mr. Clerk, roll call is required. On approving the budget transfer, Councillor Hurst. Approving the budget? Absent. Councillor Shea? Yes. Councillor Twiggs? Yes. Councillor Allen? Yes. Councillor Rook? Yes. Councillor Bud Williams? Yes. Councillor Ramos? Absent. Councillor Marcus Williams? Yes. Councillor Gomez? Yes. Councillor Ash? Yes. Councillor Edwards? Yes. Councillor Walsh? Yes. Councillor Fenton? Yes. More insufficient. Order is approved. Item number nine. Item number nine is a uh, uh, budget transfer uh, in the Parks Department for $80,000. Good evening, Good Mr. Sullivan. Can Good you evening, speak counselors. To, uh, speak to this item number 10 in. Item nine and 10 one. is together. Uh, yes. Uh, these are uh, the funds necessary to go through the city, our islands, terraces, parks, and do a deep cleaning our gateways and really just give the city a good cleaning and mulching and uh, I think it's done well we this would be the fourth year that we've done this and then this year we're able to take these funds from our, our personal service account and 20,000 from reserve for contingencies okay. Councilor Williams just a question Pat in your estimation uh, how long will this what will this hundred thousand dollar do Take it to September. No, July? this will be done in the next three to four weeks. This is to get that deep cleaning, kind of like your your spring cleanup of your yard. We're going to do this across the entire the initial. city. This is that big cleanup to make things look good. Okay. That'll, want, that'll yeah. get us through the summer. It'll get you through the summer. Well, if you do it right, it'll be mulched, edged, and it will get us through the summer. We have in our budget the regular mowings and okay. everything in, in our regular operational so this, budget going so for when July you, when one. You, when do you plan to start? I'll start tomorrow morning if this yeah. gets approved tonight. I was just talking to a counselor and we thought that the starting to grow, starting It to is. It, it'll get us that here. extra mole that we need to. So yes. that's every neighborhood in the city, every Through island? the whole city, yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Councilor Walsh. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Pat, does this cover all of the gateways or is there, is there? It'll be all the gateways will be addressed entrances into the city. So there aren't any areas that will be missed. You're able to do? No, nope. everything should, in, by the end of June, everything should look very neat and clean and attractive. Okay, great. Thank you. And if you see something, don't hesitate to call me. Okay, anybody else? Okay, Mr. Clerk, roll call, please. Item number 10. Item number nine. Uh, excuse me, nine. On uh, approving the uh, budget transfer within the Parks Department for $80,000, Councillor Hurst. Absent. Councillor Shea. Yes. Councillor Twiggs. Yes. Councillor Allen. Yes. Councillor Rook. Yes. Councillor Bud Williams. Yes. Councillor Ramos. Yes. Councillor Marcus Williams. Yes. Councillor Gomez. Yes. Councillor Ash. Yes. 
Councillor Edwards. Yes. Councillor Walsh. Yes. Councillor Fenton. Yes. More insufficient. Order is approved. <laughs> Item number 10. On approving the transfer from reserve to contingency to park, from reserve for contingency to the Parks Department for $20,000, Councillor Hurst. Absent. Councillor Shea. Yes. Councillor Twiggs. Yes. Councillor Allen. Yes. Councillor Rook. Yes. Councillor Bud Williams. Yes. Councillor Ramos. Yes. Councillor Marcus Williams. Yes. Councillor Gomez. Yes. Councillor Ash. Yes. Councillor Edwards. Yes. Councillor Walsh. Yes. Councillor Fenton. Yes. More than sufficient. Order is approved. Item number 11. Item number 11 is a transfer from free cash to the dispatch department in the amount of $244,666.26. Mr. Plant, before you begin, this matter was referred to committee last time because Ms. Nazaro was not here. Where is she? Uh, she was at the meeting, uh, at the subcommittee meeting. She can't be here at the moment now. She has a uh, child care issue that she's going to be back for the 8 o'clock meeting. Is there a committee report on this, Councilor yeah, Allen? Yes, this was one of the things we discussed at 5.30. She gave a good report exactly of what this was about. Uh, the okay. finance team was there to support her on that. Uh, it's an issue which uh, the state, uh, everybody was hoping to get reimbursed by the state, and DOR basically said we're not going to reimburse. End of story. You've got to pick it up yourself. Uh, she made a good report on it and said she'd be back for the 8th, but she wouldn't. She had to go home and deal with some child care issues on the in-between. Okay. Yep. Councilor Williams? Just, just to announce, thank you, Mr. President. <clears throat> just in terms of what was the rationale for them not reimbursing her $244,000? Yeah, so um, uh, the dispatch director inherited uh, a reimbursement when she was hired, and there was a lot of paperwork that didn't exist that was required by the state. Uh, we're not the only community in the situation. DOR, after years of fighting with them and trying to get D or Department of Public Safety to reimburse it, DOR basically issued a, a report saying uh, either raise it on your tax recap or pay for it in some other way, but you got to take care of it. So it's been something that's been ongoing for years. We've been trying to reconcile it, and we haven't been able to do it to the satisfaction of the Department of Public okay. Safety. So going forward? Going forward, she's corrected all those processes and everything else that we're actually getting the reimbursements and not in a, a it's not perfect, but it's in a much more timely manner. It's not on our end, it's on the state's end when we don't get it now, so. Just in terms of how you report to the state? Uh, the terms of what we're asking reimbursements for. We're not, we're not making it overly complicated anymore and doing it in a way that makes sense and easier. So you think she has a handle on she it? She definitely has a handle on okay. it. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other counselors? Okay, Mr. Clerk, roll call, please. On approving the transfer, Councillor Hurst, absent. Councillor Shea. Yes. Councillor Twiggs. Yes. Councillor Allen. Yes. Councillor Rook. Yes. Councillor Bud Williams. Yes. Councillor Ramos. Yes. Councillor Marcus Williams. Yes. Councillor Gomez. Yes. Councillor Ash. Yes. Councillor Edwards. Yes. Councillor Walsh. Yes. Councillor Fenton. No. More than sufficient. Uh, order is approved. Okay. Item number 12, Mr. Clerk. Item number 12 is a transfer from free cash to the police department in the amount of $5,317.88. Good evening, Mr. Plant. Thank you, Mr. President, to the council. Uh, this order is back before the council, and it is the basis of an arbitrator's ruling for the Police uh, Supervisors Association in order to put money that comes in through the uh, extra detail fund and put it from the general fund into the special detail account. Um, it is something that we're looking to negotiate out of the contract going forward based upon the fact that it, uh, it directly violates Mass General Law, that the money belongs to the general fund. Uh, the $5,000 short money that we figured that it made more sense for us uh, to not appeal it and to negotiate out of the contract. So we'll be bringing this back quarterly until, that, until we are successful in that endeavor. Uh, Mr. Clerk, this matter was referred to committee, wasn't it? Which committee was it referred to? Councilor Hurst here. Finance. Finance and public safety is what I have my recollection. Did you, was, it, was there a meeting on it? Excuse me, this is the item I mentioned before when I said, in my report, I said the $5,000 item that Councilor Ramos had issues with. Councilor, speaking for Councilor Twiggs and myself at the meeting, we didn't have any issues with going forward and approving this. We heard Pat, TJ and Pat Burns explain how this weird situation came about. We were okay with it. I just knew that Councilor Ramos had concerns. So from a finance committee standpoint, we were okay. 
Would you like to keep it in committee perhaps until um, you can schedule a joint session with Councillor Ash? I defer that to, you know, to Councillor Ramos. It's, a, it, it's, it's only $5,300. Council so. Ramos. Uh, Mr. President, I just wanted to give <clears throat> our, our finance committee an opportunity to take a closer look at it. I was concerned with um, uh, TJ's descri description of it, um, saying that it, it violated mass general law, general law. And so I just wanted them to take a closer look at it. Uh, if the committee is okay with it, I'm, I'm okay with it as well. Okay. So are you comfortable with taking it out for a vote tonight then, Councilor Allen? Yes. Okay. Any other questions on the matter? Okay, roll call, Mr. Clerk. On approving the transfer, Councillor Hurst. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Councillor Shea. Yes. Councillor Twiggs. Yes. Councillor Allen. Yes. Councillor Rook. Yes. Councillor Bud Williams. Yes. Councillor Ramos. Yes. Councillor Marcus Williams. No. Councillor Gomez. Yes. Councillor Ash. Yes. Councillor Edwards. Yes. Councillor Walsh. Yes. Councillor Fritton. No, more than sufficient, order is approved. Okay, item number 13. Item number 13 is a transfer from free cash to the OPEB trust fund in the amount of $480,991. Mr. Plan. Thank you, Mr. President. This order is back before the council. Uh, we're seeking to transfer 10% of certified free cash uh, into this trust fund for other, other post-employment benefits. It's only $480,000, but it at least sends the right message that we're starting to address our OPEB liability. Counselors? Okay. Mr. Clerk, roll call, please. On approving the transfer, Councillor Hurst. Yes. Councillor Shea. Yes. Councillor Twix. Yes. Councillor Allen. Yes. Councillor Rook. Yes. Councillor Bud Williams. Yes. Councillor Ramos. Yes. Councillor Marcus Williams. Yes. Councillor Gomez. Yes. Councillor Ash. Yes. Councillor Edwards. Yes. Councillor Walsh. Yes. Councillor Fenton. Yes. More than sufficient. Order is approved. Okay. Item number 14 has already been approved. If it's okay with the council, I'd like to skip item number 15 until last because I've sponsored that and then I'll give up the chair just for efficiency purposes. Does anybody object to that? No. Okay. Uh, item number six, so we're going to skip item number 15. We'll take it last. Item number 16 uh, is going to stay in committee per Councillor uh, Hurst, Chair of General Government. Item number 17, Mr. Clerk. Second step. Item number 17 for second step, uh, an, order, uh, an ordinance amending various chapters regarding engineering permit fees. Okay. Uh, Mr. Signoli, do you want to just remind everybody very briefly what we're doing? Can we take third step too, Mr. President? Mm -hmm. step step, yes. Evening, councilors. Uh, at the last city council meeting, uh, you voted on the first step for the engineering permits fee increase, the permits within the engineering department that oversees excavation and occupancy of our public ways have not been increased in over uh, eight years, I believe. And we put forth a schedule for your review. Uh, we went both through the maintenance and development committee and finance committee previous to the last meeting and you voted on the first step at the last meeting. Okay, any questions from the council? Okay, all those in favor of second step referral to committee on enrollment, say aye. 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 Those opposed, the ayes have it. Mr. Why don't we, um, Mr. President. Madam Clerk, if we can have the committee on enrollment meet quickly, yeah. then uh, we can take up third step. Councilor Williams. Can I ask Mr. Signoli when these uh, fees go into effect? When will they go into effect? Proposed fees would go into effect July 1st. July 1st, okay, thank you. Okay. So what we're going to do is, this is going to be a good trick. So we're going to take uh, item number 15. I'm going to ask Council Ramos to come up so I can explain it to everybody. And then Council Ramos will preside over a third step on the engineering fees. Um, before we do that, because once I give the podium up to Council Ramos, he'll wrap up the meeting before we start our 8 o'clock. I want a public service announcement for everybody. 
I'd like to call a special meeting for Friday afternoon. The Parks Department, because of the great work that they're doing with tree planting across the city and the advent of the tornado, et cetera, has been given some surplus funds from the state um, at the end of the fiscal year to be able to do some new projects. So I'd like to call a special meeting for Friday afternoon. Um, can we get seven counselors here for Friday at, let's say, 11 o'clock in the morning? Uh, is it easier to do 2 o'clock in the afternoon on Friday? Okay, let's do it this way. Raise your hand if you can do 11 o'clock on Friday afternoon in this chamber. Excuse me, Friday morning. I don't have my calendar. Okay, how about Friday afternoon, let's say 2 o'clock? One, two, you could do one o'clock. How about one o'clock on Friday? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's one o'clock. We do a one o'clock, Mr. Clerk. So a special meeting on one o'clock, Friday afternoon. Uh, that is the 10th, yes. And we'll just have that one item. Okay? All right, so with that, Councillor Ramos. How long do you take that meeting to last, Mr. President? Uh, Mr. Clerk, please call the item number 15. Item number 15 is an order accepting Mass General Law Chapter 53, Section 18B, sponsored by Councillor Fenton. Councilor Fenton. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, okay, so what this statute does is it's a local option under Mass General Law that allows a municipality to put out uh, materials educating the public on a referendum of any sort. Typically, Referendums that require literature that's passed out to uh, or mailed to folks uh, in the electorate is conducted by the state secretary's office, secretary of state's office. The reason that I've put this forward, a lot of other communities in Massachusetts have enacted it. Springfield has not. The reason I'm putting it forward is because last week I appointed an advisory committee to this council to advise us on CPA, Community Preservation Act. Um, you know, I don't expect that, that we have the ability to get into the merits of CPA tonight. But the long and short of it is that if that advisory committee makes a favorable recommendation uh, to this body, we're going to be asked to put a referendum on the ballot uh, for November, which can go towards a lot of public benefit projects, including, I hope, the Campanile. So the long and the short of it is, without enacting this state statute, the clerk and, in conjunction, the Board of Election Commissions can't print uh, election material to educate the public on what this law is and what it could do for the public without codifying this state law. So it just, it allows the election commission to uh, print a summary of the proposal for the referendum if we choose to put it on the ballot uh, and mail it uh, to taxpayers. That's what it would do. And it wouldn't be just for this referendum, it'd be for any referendum that the city could have uh, in the future. So if there's any questions, I'll take them, but um, that's it. So we're not, we're not going to decide CPA tonight. We're certainly not deciding whether the referendum is a good idea. This is just a preliminary step to say if we do get there, we want to make sure people know what they're voting on uh, when they get in the, uh, the voting booth. Thank you for that explanation. Uh, Council Gomez. I just want to commend uh, um, President Michael Fenton because I think it's important that we do educate our residents especially not necessarily on the CPA. Um, the good thing about is this CPA is that this is, these are funds that, are, that if the, re, the, the public do want this, that that stuff will come back to this committee and then we'll have a, a say on where it goes. Uh, around, this, around the state, if this is, if this is uh, codified how he said, it, we would be the biggest city to, to do so. I know um, we have a lot of things we um, like the, like you stated the what's that called again? I'm sorry, the king. The king. <laughs> She's always talking about it, but it's important that we're trying to create other ways of, of finding money, and that's something that we're going to talk about later. 
and I think this is a good step, and I just want to say that I'm in fully support of it, and I'm happy that you did so, and you did select a great group of people that I am fully in support of also. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions from the council? All right, this is a voice vote. All those in favor of accepting the provisions of Mass General Laws, Chapter 53, Section 18B, say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Next item, Mr. Clerk. Um, we have third step. Next item is third step on. Next item is third step on amending various chapters regarding engineering permit fees. Mm -hmm. Item number seventeen. I'm sorry. Item number seventeen. Amending various uh, uh, chapter. Amending various engineering permit fees. Mm -hmm. Please call the roll. Councillor Hurst. Yes. Councillor Shea. Yes. Councillor Twiggs. Yes. Councillor Allen. Yes. Councillor Rook. Yes. Councillor Bud Williams. Yes. Councillor Ramos. Yes. Councillor Marcus Williams. Yes. Councillor Gomez. Yes. Councillor Ash. Yes. Councillor Edwards. Yes. Councillor Walsh. Yes. Councillor Fenton. Yes. More than sufficient. Are there any? Is there any other business before this council? I have no further business before this body. No further business. We will stand adjourned for 12 minutes. Our next meeting will begin at 8 p.m. Oh, Thank you. Well.